In this video, I'll be teaching you how to run your first PF2E Foundry Combat. This is part four of a series on how to run your first PF2E Foundry game. And if you've already run a combat, don't worry, this video will probably teach you something new. And if you haven't seen the previous three videos in this series that show you how to set up Foundry, the settings, and how to create a character, check them out right up here. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out and leave a comment below if any other videos you want to see next. If you saw my previous tutorial videos, the modules that I used in those and the settings that I set up for those have all been kept intact. We're going to go ahead and add a couple more modules here so that you can have a smoother combat experience. If you want a full list of combat modules, check that video out here. I'll be using a few from that list, not all of them, just to make your combat a little easier the first time. The first one we're going to add is Monk's Combat Details. It's a pretty important combat module that kind of works good right out of the box. And the second one we're going to add is combat booster for the turn marker. I'm not going to change any settings in these modules, but just one, this one right here. You'll need to change the setting or it's gonna glitch out with the PF2E system. Let's start with our combat. Our brave adventurer player characters are down in the dungeon when suddenly the AP says they need to fight some rats. I'm gonna show you step by step what I do as a game master and the steps you can follow to have a perfectly efficient combat. The first thing I do is let the player characters get into position first. So let's say Valero is investigating this barrel and Mauricial and Azrin are over here but Kyra is looking at her phone and hasn't moved yet. Damn it Kyra pay attention. You definitely need to pause the game to make sure the players know something's about to happen. Now whenever the combat's about to start and you're about to begin to reveal these rats I let my player characters get into position based on where they would realistically be when combat starts and not punish them punitively because their character was lagging slightly behind. Let let me explain how I do this. What I do is go to the left side, go to measurement controls, grab a rectangle and place it in a reasonable position where the player characters would normally be. After all, player characters stick together. Unless they don't, of course, but that's another problem. Regardless, then I say, hey guys, move yourself in a formation where you would start the battle initially, and they sort of do so. This is just my style of DMing. You could start combat wherever they were in the map if you really wanted to. Sometimes it just might be more fun if they're all over the place and the rats get them. Also, keep in mind that I allow my players to draw their weapons as a free action before the start of combat only if they're not surprised so players are in position the rats are revealed by highlighting them all and clicking on this toggle visibility state looks like initiative is about to be rolled hopefully you check the encounter balance was correct using the xp macro that i talk about in this video right here this next part's easy remove the template you set up earlier select all the player characters enemies right click on one of them and toggle the combat state when you toggle the combat state, the combat tracker automatically pops up on the right. Roll all the NPCs by shift clicking or clicking and clicking roll NPCs here and then tell your players to roll initiative. You can tell players to roll initiative by telling them to go to the cross sword icon on the right and clicking the dice next to their name. They can also roll from their character sheets and rolling from the character sheets lets them change the type of initiative they want to roll in case they want to roll stealth or something. You roll the initiative, go to the music icon Icon, play your battle music, go back here and begin the encounter. You'll see the combat tracker popping out on the right side due to Monk's combat details. Now, if it's a player character, it's just a matter of asking what they do and keeping track of their actions. Marisil, it's your turn. What are you going to do? I'm going to use my first action to step here, my second action to attack the rat. Marisha is going to have to hover over the rat and press T to target it. Then click on the strike plus seven on her rapier. And then when it shows up, click on the damage button. That'll then apply the damage by clicking on that. Some of this stuff is a lot easier due to the automation that we set up with tool belt on part two of my tutorial series. Third action to move back. Did you catch all that? Let's do it again, but with the rat. All right. Let's go to the giant rat's turn. It's going to spend its first action to step here. We're going to target Valeros by hovering over to Valeros and pressing T. We're going to go ahead and jaws strike Valeros. That is a miss. 
Last action. Screw it. We'll MAP. And Valeros gets crit on. Exciting. We'll roll the critical damage here. And 12 damage on Valeros. He's still alive. He'll be fine. Hopefully you're getting into the groove of things and are getting kind of a deal here. Uh, Valeros is going to go ahead and attack twice and raise his shield as a third action. This raising his shield is important for this next bit. Kyra's turn is simple. She's going to cast a two-action heal spell on Valeros by using the proper buttons on the right there. Hopefully targeting Valeros so it's easier to automate. For her last action, Kyra's going to step back here. You're going to have to remind your players to target. It's super important they do. As the next track runs in and actually hits Valeros, since Valeros has his shield raised, he can quickly shield block by clicking on the block button and then clicking on damage. That's basically the first round. I'm going to show you one more thing, which is a save spell. It is now Ezrin's turn, and Ezrin's going to go ahead and target the giant rat and cast Daze. Now, you can click on the giant rat and click on that save 17 basic will save, or you can click on roll damage and have the save done by clicking on the dice right there. Continue doing turns until all the rats are dead or your player characters TPK. You don't want that though, do you? And that was basic combat. Let me show you some advanced things using Foundry that you might find useful. If you have tool belt target and template helper turned on, like I mentioned in the previous video, this part's going to be very useful for you. If Ezrin wants to cast an AoE like Breathe Fire, you can target all creatures inside the template, then click on Roll Damage, then do the saves all at once for the giant rats and apply the damages one by one. Look at that! Efficiency! The next tip has to do with status effects. Let's say you want to add a status effect to Mauricial. They're all right here, including prone. And she will have the automatic off guard added to her because of prone. And then this next step is invaluable for combat, especially if you're doing stuff like trip and grapple. You're gonna need to grab this macro called basic action macros. Check this video out right here to see where to find it. You select her token, have a player use basic action macros. We can trip. Huh. She's gonna fall prone. Marissa, stop falling. Those were some bonus tips. Let's see what we do when combat is over, and that'll be the video. As the rat, last rat falls unconscious, we will end the encounter in the bottom right here. I usually delete these giant rats afterwards, but if you're checking for experience, don't delete them just yet. Remember to use the XP macro to see what the experience calculation for this battle was and then tell your players to gain that amount of experience. The next part is the 10 minutes of treat wounds and whatnot after a battle. Hey, if you want to see that video, let me know in the comments below because I don't know if these tutorials are useful to you. If they are, let me know. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Oh, and watch this video. This one right here. This is probably that aforementioned after battle video. If it's out, if it's not out, you'll see another video here. Thank you.